He's the president and CEO of the Latin American Management Association, LAMA, has been an advocate for the Hispanic minority and small business community since 1972. Thank you, Congresswoman Velasquez. It's a pleasure to be here today. Thank you, and Ranking Member Graves and other members of the committee. Uh, just a, a quick note here. Uh, I'm not going to be talking about modernization of the 8A program today. We've testified on that before and provided numerous position papers on that issue, uh, on those issues. Uh, we appreciate your work on 8A modernization. I will say in, in passing that uh, LAMA and USHCC support parity among all the socioeconomic programs. None of them should um, receive priority over the other. It's time to let the contracting officers do their job and uh, make sure that they meet all the goals and all the socioeconomic programs. As I uh, pondered where we go from here and I think back of our almost 40-year history and our initial meetings with companies like Lockheed Martin and FMC and IBM where minority contracting was almost, almost non-existent. Uh, over that 40-year period, virtually all of the federal agencies have established robust programs, as have major prime contractors. I'm not suggesting for a moment that they're all uh, in, in perfect shape, but uh, in the main, uh, the goals are being met. So the question is, uh, where do we go from here? If we're succeeding in general, is there any justification for continuing these programs? In a sense, in a word, the answer is yes. Disparity studies across the United States indicate that when MBE programs are in effect, uh, MBE contracting takes place. When MBE programs are not in effect, little or no MBE contracting takes place. So we recommend the reenactment of the SDB uh, program and that the Congress hold hearings to amass the evidence necessary to prove widespread discrimination. That would serve as a foundation of evidence to prevent uh, further court cases like Rothy from dismantling the SDB and 8A programs. Moving on. Um, I'm concerned about missed goals uh, on the part of the agencies, uh, Congresswoman, as you have over the years. And as I think about that uh, and think about the usefulness of PEA, price evaluation adjustment, our recommendation is that we, uh, we utilize PEA not just for the SDB program but for all socioeconomic programs and small business programs across the board. Anytime a federal agency is failing to meet its goal, the Air Force failed to meet its goal in FY09 by a wide margin, achieving 16 percent instead of 23 percent. So Air Force, DOE, Education, USAID are, are, are examples of agencies where the PEA should be used to make sure that they meet their goals. We believe it's time to substantially increase the small business goal in federal contracting. There's no reason for large business to receive three quarters of the federal procurement dollar. Um, there's ample evidence that this is timely. Many agencies routinely exceed their 23 percent goal by wide margins, including HUD, USDA, DOC, State, Department of Homeland Security, Interior, DOT, and so forth. We also see that many l larger small businesses are successfully performing contracts through the Small Business Set-Aside Program in the range of 50 to 100, 400, and even a billion dollars. The $400 million uh, contract is with the Air Force Western Range in, in California. The billion-dollar contract is with NASA. Uh, those, companies, those small businesses are performing uh, contracts of that nature quite successfully. In addition, the socioeconomic program eats up about 20 percent uh, of the 23 percent goal, so we need to expand it 20, 20 percent when you include the 8A portion. So we recommend that the S small business goal be increased from 23 to 40 percent. In the subcontracting arena, as you well know, we continue to have problems of primes not meeting their goals and engaging in bait-and-switch uh, um, uh, tactics, as Mr. Hilner, Hilmer has referred to. The missing ingredient in those subcontracting programs is what? A contract. If there's a contract between the SDB and the prime contractor, contracting will take place. There is uh, a self-enforcing aspect to this because we don't need a government bureaucracy. We don't need penalties to enforce. When, when the prime contractor fails to um, abide by the terms of the contract, the small business can simply go to court and, and seek redress. Eligibility fraud is rampant in these programs, as your committee and, and other uh, studies have, have uh, proven, have demonstrated. We need simplified, um, cost-effective ways to reduce the cost of, of um, enforce, enforcement. And we recommend something we call the REI, Recorded Eligibility Statement, simple procedure where SBA would put on record under oath uh, on 
a, any and all businesses that are self-certifying for these programs. We think that that would literally overnight eliminate a lot of this fraud because it's one thing for a, a service disabled veteran business owner to tell a, a contracting officer, yes, I qualify. It's quite, a, quite another to go on record under oath stating that that individual uh, meets all the eligibility criteria. At the end of your testimony, you'll find a, a, a suggested REI that gives you the types of questions that could be asked of that individual the business owner under oath. That could take pl place remotely at any Kinko's at any location anywhere in the country. SBA would not have to travel, and nor would the company have to travel either. Uh, Mr. Dillinger, yes. time is expired. All right. Thank you so much.